Hello, my brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are doing well today. So I wanted to do um, the second part of the video that I uploaded yesterday about taking up your cross. There was just so much that needed to be said that I went ahead and I'm going to upload another video kind of extending off of it and talking a little bit more about it and in depth about it. And I pray that it encourages you and I pray that it helps you in your Christian journey. So we know that Jesus is a loving God and that he is merciful and grace. Uh, uh, he gives a lot of grace. And Jesus will never force himself on anyone. He freely gives the gift of salvation to anyone who is willing to take it. A cross is not something that is forced upon you. The cross that you are, are asked to bear is not something that's forced upon you, over which you have no choice in the matter. A cross is something that you willingly take up. Jesus willingly laid down his life for us, and he is calling us to willingly pick up our cross for him. When we say no to sin and yes to Christ, we are choosing to deny oneself and fully put our trust in this man named Jesus to fully carry us and carry our burdens and to redeem us from all unrighteousness. For a sinner to be saved, they first have to deny themselves of the old man. They put away the foolish things of the world and turn towards Christ, and then he will begin to reshape their minds and form them into a new creation. From that point forward, the believer, there, for the believer, there is a requirement that is of discipleship, which is to take up one's cross. The cross was something executions were achieved. Therefore, when we pick up our cross daily, we are executing the sinful man and putting on the ways of the Lord. For a disciple of Christ to take up his cross is for him to be willing to start on a death march, to, so to speak. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to be willing to do these things in order to deepen your relationship and in order to grow in your walk with him. To come to Jesus for salvation is not to raise a hand or sign a card, um, to come to Jesus Christ is to come to the end of oneself and and to sin and to become so hungry for Christ and his righteousness that one will make any sacrifice they can for him. Christ does not call disciples to himself to make their lives easy and prosperous, but to make them holy and productive. Willingness to take up his, this cross is the mark of true discipleship. There was an unnamed hymn writer that said this, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Those who make initial confessions of their desire to follow Jesus but refuse to accept hardship or persecution are characterized as the false, fruitless souls who are like rocky soil with no depth. They wither and die under the threat of a reproach of Christ. Many people want a no-cost discipleship, but Christ offers no such option. You either are for me or you are against me, he said. When someone accepts Jesus as their Savior, his Holy Spirit comes to dwell within that person. It's a two-heart beating as one because we have become one with him. Whatever grieves him should also grieve us because we, are, we have a knowing that we have come against him. If we... Have a close relationship with Jesus, you will begin to be in tune and in step with him together as one. The third requirement for discipleship is loyal obedience. Only after a person denies himself and takes up his cross, Jesus said he is prepared to follow me. True discipleship is submission to the Lord of Christ, the Lordship of Christ, and that becomes a pattern for your life. At the heart of what it means to be a disciple for our Lord is living in loving devotion to God. Genuine love for Christ will always manifest itself in obedience. This does not mean that a Christian cannot as ascend into sinless perfection. This will never be um, this will never happen the sight of glory. Neither does it imply that a believer will never disobey a God again because that's false. Isolated acts of disobedience will still occur, but the new birth that um, does give a new heart that desires to obey the word. 
There is no time lapse between the time of a person's conversion and when one begins to obey Christ. You obey Christ the moment you believe by saying, not I, but you alone, Lord Jesus. The exercise of saving faith is the first step of a life of obedience. Simply you put true faith, simply put, true faith is obedience. Our obedience of faith is not the grounds upon which God declares us righteous, but it reveals our faith to be genuine. Paul explains, Do you know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? Romans 6.16 So there's an exchange of masters when you, when you are at conversion, a relinquishing of our old bondage to sin for a new loyalty to Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone is a slave, either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. Before conversion, we were slaves of sin and lived in obedience to sin. But in conversion, we became slaves of Christ and live in obedience to him, or we should live in obedience to him. If you refuse to be obedient to the Lord your God, you are not doing yourself any favors, but instead you are heaping hot coals on your head, and God will get your attention one way or another. He will bend you towards him, even if it's painful in the process. Throughout one's Christian life, John claimed that genuine believers will continue to keep his commandments. Keep is in the present tense, not past tense indicating an ongoing obedience throughout the entirety of a believer's life. It doesn't end the minute that you believe, but it's a daily event that should continue through one's Christian journey. All who are born again will pursue obedience to the end. Commandments is plural, indicating obedience to the full spectrum of a divine requirement. Following Christ does not allow for selective obedience. Rather, we must obey all the commandments of God, not merely the convenient ones. Yes, we will fall. We will not be able to keep these commandments to a T. But they are a groundwork for us to keep. When John says believers keep the commandments, this picture pictures a guard or a watchman watching over a priceless treasure. In like manner, the one who knows God will keep sharp watch over all his word requires, and his commandments are not burdensome, 1 John 5, 3 says, but they are a blessing, Psalms 1, 1 says. Every step of heart-prompted obedience leads to experiencing abundant life in Christ. However, every step of disobedience takes us away from the joy of divine goodness. Far from being optional, grace-fueled obedience is absolutely necessary for Christ-likeness. Is there any need to pray about whether or not to obey God's word? No. If you are a true follower of Christ and you love him, you just need to obey. So with that, I love you guys and I will talk to you later.